Hillary takes aim at Bernie. How will he respond? Let's talk about a child middle America. Well, right now I should be homeschooling my kids. But I had a call at work and um, as I was wrapping up, this thing flashes on my screen from the Washington Post where I get these updates because um, I'm subscribed to every news outlet on the planet. And I see this. And when I saw it, I couldn't believe it. Uh, the, the article says Hillary Clinton points to alleged sexism in Bernie Sanders' campaign. It's part of the pattern. Now, recently, Uncle Bernie, um, I guess it was one of his proxies, put out a um, an article about Biden's corruption and saying that Biden was corrupt and et cetera, et cetera. Yesterday, uh, I found that out in the shower to which I pumped my fist. And then today I wake up and I see that Bernie apologizes. Isabel, get your boy. He, he doesn't understand where we are still. Um, Mr. Biden is corrupt. He's corrupt as hell. And um, it doesn't matter, Bernie, whether you take it back or not, especially if the Republicans get their way and, and he will have to testify in this impeachment nonsense, his corruption will become even more clear and even more stark relief. Um, but Bernie apologizes for it. It's unbelievable. Anyway, uh, so then this article comes out, and, and, and you know, unless I would have seen it myself, I would not have believed that it was true. The interview is with The Hollywood Reporter. And it tears open the still mending wounds from the protracted 2016 primary that pitted Clinton against the independent senator from Vermont. That would be Mr. Sanders. The interview coincides with a new documentary called Hillary, which is debuting at the Sundance Film Festival. In the documentary, Clinton has some of her strongest words to date about Sanders. Get this. I'm going to post this on the screen so you can see it yourself there, listener, because you're not going to believe what this woman says about Bernie Sanders. He was in Congress for, for years. He had one senator support him, Clinton said. Nobody likes him. Nobody wants to work with him. He got nothing done. He was a career politician. It's all just baloney, and I feel so bad that people got sucked into it. <laughs> he got nothing done. Uh, now, look, I'm not a I'm not a Sanders devotee. Um, I liked him in 2016, but actually, uh, the irony is, I I was soured on to Bernie once he started uh, stumping for Hillary Clinton, which obviously got him nothing. <laughs> Bernie did about 37 to 40. Uh, uh, stumping little routes for Hillary, many of which were in the Rust Belt states that she abandoned because Bernie had the political acumen to realize that those were losable states. And she, he went to places Hillary refused to go to. He even went up to the great state of Maine, uh, where Hillary lost an electoral vote, which Maine was supposed to be a no-doubter blue state. Um, so Bernie, for all his troubles for Hillary, um, by the way, in comparison, Miss Clinton uh, did uh, eight, eight little, uh, little stumping thingamajiggies for Obama. So uh, Bernie did literally four times more for Hillary than Hillary did for Obama, and this is the thanks that he gets. And I, I'm just wondering at what point. Bernie is going to really man up and fight back. Now, Bernie, you don't have to be um, evil. You don't have to play politics. All you have to do is tell the truth. When the Biden article came out, my brother, you were telling the truth. All you have to do is tell the truth, Bernie. Um, and so here's Hillary. Oh, he got nothing done. He's just an ideologue. He's a career politician. He got nothing done. It's all just baloney, yada, yada, yada. I feel so bad for the people. Well, maybe... Uh, Bernie couldn't get anything done because he was speaking out against government corruption and uh, he was saying that in the nexus of government corruption 
Maybe that's it. Maybe Bernie was talking about health care and things like that for all, and uh, you were too busy pleasing your Wall Street donors who you had uh, closed door you know, discussions with where you talked about your public persona versus your actual uh, personal persona. Maybe the fact that all of you were nasty and corrupt on the left and the right made it so that Bernie couldn't get anything done, but maybe the fact now that America has actually caught up to Bernie in regards to political corruption, money in politics, Medicare for all, uh, student loan debt forgiveness, those types of things that are popular across the board to all Americans, maybe now he'll be able to get something done. The fact that he didn't get anything done doesn't necessarily mean he's incompetent. It may mean... Hillary, that you and your friends on the left and the right, you know, you and the Bushes are all chummy. Maybe it means on the left and the right um, that both of you were horribly corrupt and he was like the one or two the, and him and the unnamed senator who supported him weren't. I mean, I, I don't know. Before Obama went into office, he was just uh, some guy from uh, Chicago, and now all of a sudden he's buying homes in Martha's Vineyard. Where did that money come from? I know where Trump's money come from, came from, uh, but Obama, Obama seemed to get very, very rich after he left office, and it's not like he was doing a lot of things to generate income while he was in office. Where did all this money come from? Very interesting. Very interesting. <sighs> Here's my watch. It's telling me to breathe. It can tell that I'm stressed out. Let's, let's continue. Asked by The Hollywood Reporter whether that <clears throat> assessment holds, still holds, Clinton was direct. Yes, it does, she said. In perhaps her most telling response, Clinton was then asked whether or not she would endorse uh, a campaign with Sanders if he wins the nomination. She demurred and then took the opportunity to go after him and his supporters again, suggesting they have disproportionately targeted women. Here's a quote in full. I'm not going to go there yet. We're still in a very vigorous primary season. I will say, however, that it's not only him. It's the culture around him. It's his leadership team. It's his prominent supporters. It's his online Bernie bros and their relentless attacks on lots of his competitors, particularly the woman. And I really hope people are paying attention to that because it should be worrisome that he has permitted this culture. Not only permitted it, he seems to be very much supporting it. And I don't think we want to go down that road again where you campaign by insult and attack. And maybe you try to get some distance from it, but you either don't know what you're campaign and supporters are doing, or you're just giving them a wink and you want them to go after Kamala or after Elizabeth, I think that's a pattern that people should take into account when they make their decisions. This is unbelievable. Okay, so here, here's what I will say. I do think Bernie has a problem with not vetting the leadership on his team. We saw that with the Project Veritas situation. I also think he has a problem with being, let's say, indelicate in the folks that he's associated himself with, like Linda Sarsour. Now, I don't have a problem with Linda Sarsour um, not denouncing Brother Minister Farrakhan. I don't have a problem with that, but I'm black. <laughs> and the vast majority of people in the DNC are not. Um, so, I, I do think he has a problem there. But as far as trying to hold Bernie accountable for every crazy thing that quote-unquote, Bernie bros say uh, uh, about people on Twitter is crazy. Isabel, who's our, our, our resident um, uh, Bernie Sanders uh, sort of uh, supporter, and she's not just a Bernie fan, I guess, you know, she goes out stumping for Bernie, and uh, I don't know if that makes Isabel a Bernie bro. Um, Isabel, is a <laughs> Isabel is a woman. So I don't know, Isabel. I don't know. Maybe you're uh, maybe you're selling out your uh, your folks here. But uh, j let's let's just watch some of the the crazy things that have been said about Bernie Sanders. I mean, if we wanted to talk about hateful rhetoric on Twitter, uh, there's this from Jen Kirkman, a blue check person. Go blank yourself with a chainsaw repeatedly 
and maybe your tax returns will fall from your bowels. I hate you. As well as, uh, you say, oh, that's a random person on Twitter. Well, there's the, the good old MSNBC host who said, Bernie Sanders makes my skin crawl. Can you imagine if during 2008, uh, some white lady got on TV and said that Barack Obama made her skin crawl? Do you think she'd still have a job? I don't. But Bernie uh, is the one who's toxic, and he's got a toxic culture around him, according to Ms. Clinton. And her campaign and the folks around her were all squeaky clean. That's what we're, that's what we're supposed to know. You know... You know the way that you handle a person like Hillary Clinton is the way that Tulsi did. Tulsi went after Hillary, both guns blazing, and Hillary had nothing to say because Hillary is not used to somebody punching her in the eye, verbally. And Tulsi went at her, both guns blazing. She got all this press. Her approval ratings went up. She got her little limelight. And Hillary had nothing to say because, number one, she was probably shocked at the degree to which uh, Tulsi went at her. But Tulsi's a soldier. You misunderstood who you were dealing with, Miss Clinton. And secondly, um, everything that Tulsi said about her was true. She is the personification of the rot of the De Democratic Party. 100% true. And Bernie doesn't have it in him. To do, now, I, I don't know what Bernie's going to do, but his apology to Biden doesn't tell me that he's going to do much. He allowed CNN to basically call him a liar on TV. Um, uh, Elizabeth Warren went up there and called him a liar on TV. He doesn't defend himself. I'm sorry, man, but this is one of the reasons I can't deal with, with you, Bernie, is because you let these people do this to you. How are you supposed to stand up against the Chinese or some other credible threat to, to the United States? How, can I, how, how are you going to stand up to the Republicans who still have the Senate? Let's say that you won, the Republicans still have the Senate. How are you going to get Medicare for all to go? You can't even stand up to these mealy mouth politicians who lie about you. You won't stand up for yourself. Come on, bro. Ugh. Um, so, <laughs> this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Um, Bernie didn't go after Kamala Harris. That was Tulsi. Tulsi went after Kamala Harris and took her down. Bernie didn't go after Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren went after him. Her crew, this, this, is the, this is the amazing, this is the gaslighting that these people do. Elizabeth Warren's crew leaked anonymously something that happened. Elizabeth went out and affirmed it and then said, I'm not talking about anything else because Bernie's my friend. And then afterwards, when she knew she was hot, Mike, she staged the entire thing. She went after Bernie and said, I think you just call me a liar on national TV. And all the silly establishment left uh, news agencies thought this was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And uh, all it did was boost Bernie's uh, contributions and his popularity and decrease Elizabeth Warren's. The, what, what the leftist media... And I, I don't even know if they could rightly be called leftists because, uh, as AOC pointed out, these people, you know, they're plutocrats, they're all rich, and they all have a stake in Bernie losing. So I don't even know what you call these people. Democratic establishment media, basically, is what you call them. These people have one strategy. If you lose in a fair and square vote, just lie and make excuses as to why you lose. And this is why I have no time for the Ukraine stuff, because it's literally the same template. You, you set the entire thing up in the, in, the, in the convention in 2016. You cheated your way into winning in the primary. Then you underestimated Trump. You lost. You tried to blame it on Comey. You blamed it on Russia. We had the Russia thing for two years. And now you're still blaming it on the Ukraine. Now we're impeaching Trump. So we can undo 2016. You didn't like the Kavanaugh nomination. So you brought a bunch of people in there to lie about him. And they admitted that they lied. So you, you lied about that. And now here comes Bernie again, and now it's Iowa. Iowa's an extremely important vote, and now instead of just going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the guy because he's so popular, all you're doing is trotting out a bunch of lies again. This is, this, can you not see the pattern? Can you not see the pattern here? This is literally the same thing over and over again with these people. 
It is unbelievable. And they can and you know what happens in literally every single case it backfired. It backfired against Hillary because you made so many people angry that they could not hold their nose and vote for you. It backfired against Trump because uh, it backfired against Kavanaugh because now the man is completely vindicated and if there was any legitimate uh, complaints against him, now everybody's going to look at it like nah, none of that's substantive because you had multiple women having to come out and admitting that they did it because they were angry and that they made up the entire story and never met the man even at the party. Uh, it backfired against Trump because the Mueller report was an utter and complete disaster, uh, especially his testimony. The Ukraine thing, oh, you got your pound of flesh, he's impeached, great. He also just raised a record amount, this is the thing that kills me with some people I hear, they say, no matter what happens, he's impeached, and he's impeached for life. You silly person, what does that have to do with the fact that he raised a record amount of money than, he, than any politician has ever raised during the impeachment, and his popularity equal that of Barack Hussein Obama, who has been running the thing for 12 years. But you got you got him impeached, so great. This is this is the strategy of the DNC. It's un, it's it's absolutely unbelievable, unbelievable. So now here we go. Now we've got Hillary going after Bernie again. I mean, this is this is just. You think that she was running? Clinton was then asked about uh, the whole Warren controversy. Well, number one, I think that sentiment is untrue, which we just should all say loudly that a woman can't win. Nobody, I don't think anybody on the planet Earth believes that a woman cannot win. Even Republicans last uh, last election cycle were saying that Hillary was a slam dunk and she was going to win. Fox News had a post mortem before the thing even was finished because they were convinced that that Hillary was going to win. So this idea that people, even even the staunchest right wingers, believed that women uh, Hillary was going to win. So it's just ridiculous. But we've got to say it loudly that they can win. Okay. <clears throat> she said, noting her popular vote win over Trump, which was completely irrelevant. She added, I think that both the press and the public have to really hold everybody running accountable for what they say and what their campaign says and does. That's particularly true with what's going on right now with the Bernie campaign having gone after Elizabeth with very personal attack on her. What are you talking about? What personal attack? <laughs> Bernie blamed Elizabeth's staff. He wouldn't even blame her because he's too naive. He blamed the staff. And then... Hours later, she came out and agreed with her staff, her anonymous staff, who will remain nameless forever into all perpetuity. And then they got into the debate. Bernie said, no, I didn't say that. She got on right afterward and said that he did. And then she went after him and gaslighted him and said, you, you just called me a liar on national TV. Well, what was he supposed to do? He only has two options. One, say, yes, I said it which would mean that it contradicted what he said about it before. So yes, I said it, and not only am I a sexist, I'm also a liar. Or, or, let's say he didn't do it, and then he said, I didn't do that. That, we're told, is an attack by Miss Clinton. That's an attack on, that's a very personal attack on her. When Elizabeth Warren was the one that's, that, that came after him in the first place, and he deferred to a fault. Un- Believable. You know, I thought that Bernie was gonna was was not really getting aggressive with with Elizabeth Warren because she's a woman, and if he were to do that, then he would be this big male bully. But when you look at what he just did with Biden, it's clear that that's just how he is. And I'm sorry, that is a flaw. That is a character flaw for somebody who wants the seat of the most powerful person on the planet. You're not going to get anything done with that type of mentality, Bernie. Unbelievable. Then this argument about whether or when he did or didn't say that a woman couldn't be elected. It's part of a pattern. If it were a one-off, you might say, okay, fine. But he said I was unqualified. <laughs> I had a lot more experience than he did and got a lot more done than he had. But that was his attack on me, end quote. Hillary. Oh, my God. Hillary, when you are running against someone, you have to explain to the voter why they should vote for you and not the other person. When Barack Hussein Obama was running against you, you styled him as an idealistic kid who had zero experience. You also leaked pictures of him 
when he was in Africa dressed up in a Muslim garb, and you also leaked picture uh, video of his preacher preaching all that stuff, the black liberation theology critical race theory stuff. Hillary, what are you talking about? You attacked Obama vociferously, and even when it was clear that it was time for you to step down because you lost horribly, you went on to talk about RFK and how RFK got assassinated and so you were holding on because maybe Mr. Obama would get assassinated. But Bernie saying that you were unqualified means that he's a sexist and he attacked you? You were unqualified. And by the way, what did he say that you were... Why was the reason given? What was the reason given, Miss Clinton, for why Bernie said you weren't qualified? Oh, that's right, your support of the Iraq war, which cost us 250,000 dead Iraqi civilians who had done us no harm whatsoever. I'm not even going to talk about the monetary cost and the 3,000 plus U.S. soldiers that died. All I'm going to talk about is the blood that was spilled, innocent blood that we did with our tax dollars to the Iraqi people, Ms. Clinton and the soldiers who have died and the soldiers' families who are absolutely ruined because they've all come back with uh, traumatic brain uh, injuries, post-traumatic stress disorder at all. That's why he said you were unqualified. And he was right. The fact that you've been in, in Washington forever, and by the way, you haven't been in Washington longer than Bernie has, just by default of his age, but the fact that you've been a, you've been a Washington acolyte all your life does not mean that you're qualified. You made horrible decisions. That and you're an inveterate liar. That was his attack on me. Unbelievable. This is, ugh. Look, Bernie is in a moment of truth right now. Bernie, what are you, 82 years old? 80 years old? This is your last hurrah. You have got to come out swinging on these people. This is a perfect moment for you. Learn what happened with Tulsi. Hillary Clinton is a vastly unpopular individual. She stole the election from you. They had, with Donna Brazil in them, they had questions given to Hillary prior to the debate happening. Bernie, uncork all this stuff and let off on these people. Position yourself as a reformer of the Democratic Party. And maybe, just maybe, you can win someone like me. But I gotta tell you, Bernie, um, th th this is the reason why I, I was kinda out. After, after you did the whole stumping for Hillary thing, I was out on you, bro. I was out on you. And, uh, and now this entire performance, I'm out. I can't do it. You know, uh, one thing about Trump is the man, when, he's not somebody that's going to let himself get pushed around. And on the one hand, it, it's very boorish and, and uncouth. But on the other hand, if you're a person who still has any form of patriotism and still wants any form of American priority in the world, that makes you go, okay, he's going to be a jerk, but at least we're going to have American priority in the world. But this stuff right here, Bernie, man, I, look, you've got a golden opportunity. Call out the corruption with Biden. Call out the, the lies of Elizabeth Warren. Michael Moore just did a, uh, an hour and a half podcast like a, a couple days ago, talked about the sad downfall of uh, Elizabeth Warren, where he chronicled all of her lies. She lied about her heritage. Did you know, I think... Harvard, uh, I forgot who it was, they basically said, can you get us a, a, uh, a, a, a Cherokee dish from your heritage? Can you get us that? Um, and then, so she sends them this Cherokee recipe. Turns out it was completely lifted and plagiarized from like the New York Times or something. It was unbelievable. Harvard said, can we, can we list you as our first woman of color? Uh, she said, yes. I mean, I mean, it was just, it was a masterful takedown on Michael's Moore part. It was lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. Bernie. Run a YouTube campaign of just Michael Moore stringing together all her lies and then simply say, who do you believe? 
But I don't think Bernie's going to do that. I think Bernie is going to either ignore it or he's going to he's going to say I'm I'm focused on the campaign. And he's not realizing he's got a golden opportunity here. This is indicative of the 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 shambles. Look, the Democratic establishment is extremely threatened by Bernie. That's the reason Obama said he would work to vote against him. Uh, and that's why Hillary's coming out swinging. She's still hurt because of the fact that she believed that the, the presidency was her birthright and it was stolen from her twice. Stolen. Uh, you know, in Jamaica, we have a we have a, a, a proverb. It says, Teef, teef from teef, God laugh. When a thief steals from a thief, God laughs. So here she was. She thiefed the the uh, the nomination from Bernie in 2016, and then Trump went out and and, and stole the election from her. <laughs> this is a disaster. Look, the Democratic Party is in absolute shambles, and uh, unfortunately, um, we're in a situation where Bernie is the actual signal point for change in the party but he may not have the spine to do what is necessary to foment that change you are ne Bernie newsflash hey hey Bernie there's no such thing as a clean revolution I don't, I'm not a fan of AOC but AOC understands that a AOC understands that she needs to get messy and she needs to name names and she needs to call people out and she does it with with reckless abandon. And I don't know, maybe AOC is going to step in and say whatever it has to be said. She's been noticeably quiet with all this, you know, identity politics silliness, Elizabeth Warren accusing him of being a sexist, yada, 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 yada. Um, maybe Bernie instructed her to be quiet. But good night. Um, so so the, the odd thing is that AOC is the one that's got the sort of disposition to bring the revolution to the Democratic Party, but Bernie's the one with the actual cachet and experience to actually implement it, but because he doesn't have the courage or the disposition, he's allowing himself to get, to get strung around here by these people. And that's one of the reasons, I just can't, I can't, that's, that's one of the things that made me really lose confidence in him, man. It really, especially in a post-Trump world, where now you've got a guy who has sort of elevated demagoguery to a point where, you know, he, he changed, and it's the same thing Trump did in the, the Republican primaries. He changed the nature of the debate. So, you know, uh, like I said, I, I think Bernie's going to have a very wet noodle response. I don't think he's going to come out as aggressive as he should. And I think that uh, Hillary Clinton is, is a case study in one of the most pathetic uh, individuals I've ever seen in my entire life. Th this attack on Bernie is completely unfounded. It's, it's, it's really out of nowhere. Um, but when you think about the Democratic establishment feeling extremely threatened by this guy... It tells you everything you need to know. It tells you that they think that Yang is a non-factor. It tells you that she believes that she shouldn't mess with Tulsi because of what Tulsi did to her before. And it tells you that they only believe that Bernie is the only threat to their uh, status quo. You know, Jimmy Dore says it all the time. It is apparent that the DNC would rather lose to Trump um then win with a progressive and that's where we are so there you are guys love your neighbor uh shout out to isabel i mean <laughs> isabel isabel uh has more gangster in her M mr sanders i need you to call up my friend isabel J, and and get on with her and let her run you through how to engage these people Get on a conference call with Isabel and AOC. Hell, bring her on the campaign trail. I'm dead serious. And um, figure out how to, how to man up, or in this case, woman up. Because, uh, anyway, Isabel, help your boy. Anyway, love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Middle America, we are the media. Till next time, guys.